Thank you, Bob. So, Aaron, you just had your first press conference as a New York Yankee manager. Is this all a whirlwind? I mean, a month ago, you were a very distinguished broadcaster. It has been. The last few days, especially, Michael, have been uh, have been crazy. But I keep telling my wife almost every day is the last three three days have unfolded and all the text messages coming in but I've started on the job and so starting to collaborate with cash having different conversations with guys in the organization having started to reach out to players and stuff um, I've loved it and it's been a lot but I feel like uh, it's it's energized me a little bit and uh, we got a lot of work to do, obviously, ahead of spring training, but um, I feel like I've hit the ground running. Aaron, take me back to that conversation with Brian Cashman when he told you, you are our guy, we want you to manage the New York Yankees. Can you describe your reaction when you heard that? Yeah, so I was driving home with my daughter um, from school, and uh, we basically pulled into the driveway, and I got off the phone, and he said, uh, just first want to make sure you're all in, um, but my recommendation to ownership is going to be that we f focus solely on you and uh, it was overwhelming it was exciting and the cool thing about it though when I got off the phone I immediately felt like let's get to work and and it immediately kicked up Cash and I's relationship to where now we're talking on the phone all the time, going over different things, starting to try and put together a coaching staff. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So it was overwhelming in some senses, but um, it really locked me in and said, all right, it's time to get to work. Now, you know you're joining an organization, and you mentioned it up to the podium, that's heavily analytic. And I'm just wondering what the role of a manager is in 2018. Do you just take the numbers and execute the numbers, or are you allowed to go by the gut? What exactly do you feel this job is? Well, I think once we get to the game, it's it's about me. And, and we are analytically driven, and I certainly embrace that. Um, the more and more that I dive into it over the years, I become more of a believer in certain things. You know, we talked about up there there being a balance. Um, that sh certainly exists. But look, I, I think my biggest job is taking all the best information that we have, getting it into the hands of the players in the most efficient way. And that is part of our job. And, you know, when it comes to game time, I'm going to be heavily versed and prepared in what are the best matchups what other the numbers suggest but then when it comes to end game now it's go it's play it's so all that leading up is the practice the preparation but we get in the game it's it's a balance between what are we looking at and what are our best matchups based on things we've we've uh, gathered from a from a number standpoint. So if, if you have a sheet in front of you, Aaron, that says at 80 pitches there's a decided drop off in Sonny Gray, but he's dealing that day. Right. You feel that you would stay with Sonny Gray, or would you have to uh, adhere to that number? Oh, it's certainly possible. Yeah, you've got to take what you're looking at, what the day is presenting. So, <clears throat> excuse me again. That, there's the balance there. Um, you know, those things matter. When we have information that's extreme, uh, you know, those are things that we're going to look at heavily. But every game, every evaluation of a player's performance within that game is going to be different. And, and, and part of hopefully what our exper expertise will be is making those determinations and being correct. Aaron, you talked a lot about relationships and how important they will be for you moving forward. What do you do on your end to get this team to buy into your theory early? Well, first and foremost, it's trying to start those relationships now. I've reached out to a lot of the guys on the team. I've texted back and forth. I've had conversations with a handful of guys. And again, I think it's so important that when the player knows that you care about them and they will know that it allows you to be transparent it allows you to have both positive conversations and difficult ones and they know that it's coming from a place from someone that cares about them someone that they can trust and i think it opens up the scope about how much you can tap into a player's potential when you have that kind of relationship. I'm gonna, I've got a wacky question for you, which you expected. Uh, you said you're working on your staff. You have Larry Rothschild, and for a guy who's never managed before, the bench coach is going to be important. 
Your dad is a legendary baseball man. Would you ever consider Bob Boone? Well, I'd always consider him. I Look, I don't think he's going to be part of our staff. He, I haven't really considered him. He's somebody that I respect greatly, that I lean on, that I will uh, talk to often. He will be someone that counsels me often, but I don't foresee him being on our staff anytime soon. What's your biggest challenge with this team? When you look at right now, uh, you, you know, it's one win away from the World Series, and it's loaded. And as you said, the farm system is loaded as well. What do you look at as the biggest challenge right now? Well, I think challenging them to get better because a lot of these guys have become great players in front of our eyes, and a lot of those people became great players this year. So now it's, you know, how do we find that consistency and that sustainability for these guys to not only take the next step, but to be able to sustain and become that reliable, um, outstanding ball player each and every day. And I think that's my biggest challenge in establishing those relationships and then getting the most out of each individual. Aaron, you talked a little bit about the coaching staff. Are you close to finalizing that staff? And then what's the next order for business for you after that? Yeah, so <clears throat> we are having a lot of talks. Close, I don't know. I mean, hopefully we'll, we'll have it done in the next couple weeks. Um, we have a lot of people that we're talking to, a lot of kind of moving parts um, with certain guys. I, I feel good about the fact that I think we're going to have a really impactful, outstanding coaching staff. And then once we have that in order, now it's all of a sudden starting to gear up for spring training and starting to plan and starting to have, you know, a situation in spring training where we hit the round gr r running, we're efficient, and we use spring training as a building block to get those guys in a position to be ready to go come the start of the season.